Hello, welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to have a very important conversation today about form and content, and we'll spend some time emphasizing this and why it's so important to the study and practice of A Course in Miracles. So at the end of our discussion, I hope this will make some sense. But as always, much more than making sense to the intellectual thinking mind, I hope that it inspires you to practice, to put these ideas into practice where the real learning takes place. This video series is but a supplement along the way. It is in absolutely no way at all designed to be a substitute for your doing the course. This is how we learn. How is that? Our experience proves to us that these ideas that we're spending all this time on are true. And when you think about it, as adult learners, that's a much better way to learn than simply reading something in a book or online or listening to a lecture, a pixelated image on your screen, a talking head. It's important to understand these ideas with the thinking mind. Sure, sure it is. However, that is absolutely nothing compared to the learning that takes place by doing it. We learn this course by doing it. If you thought you could get away without doing it, well, sorry, not sorry. It's how we awaken. So, if you're still with me, and I hope that you are, let's talk about this distinction between form and content. One of the most prevalent ideas in A Course in Miracles is that everything that we see and do, everything that we hear, all of our experience, everything that someone does or that you do is either an expression of love or it is a call for love. It's one of those two. So if you wish to simplify all of life, take this idea and let it percolate and run with it in your mind. Everything is either an expression of love or it is a call for love. Just that. Anything that your brother does or that you do that could be characterized as disturbing, egregious, vengeful, hateful, spiteful, guilt-ridden and wrong, anything annoying, anything that is not wholly joyous is a call for love. So when your brother behaves badly, it's a call for love. We have absolutely no problem taking a look at small children and recognizing this. Same. Same principle applies. And uh, if you think that, well, we're actually the small children here, yes, you would be quite right. Unflattering, for sure. Little kids want attention. In other words, they want love. So they do whatever it takes to get it. They garner our attention maybe by doing something cute and heartwarming or by acting out. We take a look at people's poor behavior sometimes in the world and think, oh, that's a cry for help. Yeah, it is. It's a call for love. Yes. Everything is either an expression of love or it's a call for love. And here as students of spirituality, we're invited to consider that the appropriate response, which we deep down know, 
to a call for love is to extend love. That is the appropriate response to a call for love. Give love. Extend love. Because if you extend judgment and blame, then the supposed separation continues and your brother remains in your mind, aloof from you, separate, out to get you, or whatever it is you happen to be thinking about him or her in the moment. So that's how simple this really is. And yes, you can boil experience down to just that. The expression of love or a call for love. So why are we confused? Great question. The answer is we're confused because we're mistaking form and content and we don't know the difference between the two. We're confused about form and content. This is a theme that runs throughout A Course in Miracles, and we're presented with this idea for our learning purposes over and over again, in fact, in many different places here in the course. So form, by form, we refer to, well, what appears on the surface, the outer form. This is one example of an outside form. These things that you're looking at on your screen, your device, are simply an example of outward form. The various occupations that we all appear to have here in the world, that's outward form. And we're stuck on outward form and we're ignoring the content. The content can refer to the essence of everything. What really matters, the real meaning, we're obsessed with the outer details and ignoring what's real. That's one way of putting it. We obsess about outer details. Think of all of the lengths that we go to to protect the physical body, to make sure that the physical body stays as young looking and as healthy and as sexy as possible for as long as is possible. The cosmetics industry is huge. The gym membership and health club industry worldwide is huge. The clothing industry is huge. We want to look good. We want to look all shiny and fancy and fabulous for the camera. What's inside? That's what we've been ignoring, and it's why we're having this conversation. It's why we're apparently here. Oh, and emphasis, please, on apparently. We don't understand form and content. So we're invited to take a look at the difference between them here on the path so that we may choose accordingly. In truth, there are no differences. There is only perfect oneness, the reality of God, which, by the way, or who or what, is the only reality. So... There are no differences. Yet here, while there appear to be multiple differences, we have need of this contrast. And the Holy Spirit shows it to us. Our inner teacher shows it to us for our learning purposes so that we may learn the difference between form and content and focus on the content, focus on the essence, the heart of the matter, so to speak, what is real and look straight past what is not.
what we do in analyzing form and obsessing over form is we're running around in circles. There is absolutely no mistake that this cycle of repeating the same stuff over and over again is referred to as a hamster wheel in world spirituality. It is. We're, we're just running, running, running on the wheel until we decide to get off the thing because we're freaking tired like a hamster. And we're the hamster. Yeah, again, how flattering. Yeah. There's no accident at all that in Buddhism, the cycle of cyclic existence, one lifetime after another in a round of suffering is known as samsara, which means wheel in Sanskrit. Absolutely no mistake at all. That is entirely an apt term for continuing to believe we're in ego and obsessing about the outward form, hoping for the peace of God, yet trading one illusion for another, trading one cosmetic product for another, really, trading one hair product for another, trading one clothing brand for another, trading one job for another, trading one modality for another modality that keeps the illusion firmly in place, trading one relationship for another, analyzing and compartmentalizing form which is unreal and ignoring content we're attempting to study the ego and analyze it and parse it down into multiple component parts and feel really really accomplished and special about ourselves The study of the ego is not the study of mind. This course is the study of mind. Healing takes place in the mind. Where else? This course is a course in mind training. You'll notice that it is not a course in manifestation of a new partner or a new job or a new shirt or a brand new automobile. That's form. This course relates to content. It relates to our changing our mind. It's a course in mind training. If that does not sound bright, shiny, and sexy, that's okay. I mean, you're here paying attention to this. And we all want the same thing. Deep down, we do. We all want the same thing. We all want the peace of God. We've been looking for it in form and neglecting the content. So let's switch our focus, shall we? The ego's thought system is complete chaos. And paying attention to form, to the outward form, in and of itself is not enough for meaning. It's the content that provides the meaning, the essence, the heart of the matter. So that's what we're invited to pay attention to. The ego is without substance. It doesn't exist. There is no separation of any kind. So, of course, it's without substance. Yet when we identify with it and attempt to analyze it ad infinitum, we're simply spinning our wheels. We are the hamster running amok and exhausting ourselves. We're spinning around, looking for answers in the exact same place that we've always looked for them and never found them. So a very practical question for each and every one of us is, are we willing, are we ready to get off of the wheel? And at some point you have answered yes, or you would not be interested in spirituality 
period, to say nothing of A Course in Miracles, which invites you to look directly at all of your stuff and bring it to the light, where the light of truth will shine it away, if only you allow it. The ego is without substance, it's without content, whatever, and it cannot defend this lack of content when you join with your brother. When two or more are joined, then the ego cannot defend its lack of content. The emphasis here is on the joining. The fact of union is enough to tell us that the ego isn't true. The fact that there is only perfect oneness is enough to tell us that the ego isn't true. How do we join with our brother? Well, we extend love. We recognize in him either the expression of love or a call for love, and we answer love with love. We answer a call for love with love. Love's returned to us. It strengthens in our mind. We join with our brother in peace, in love, in peace, in our limitlessness. We extend the miracle of true forgiveness, or we extend the miracle of a smile or a loving gesture. Whatever outward form that takes, it's not the form that matters, is it? It's the content, love. To the extent in day-to-day -day life that you're able to recall, to remember that everything is either an expression of love or a call for love, you will do very well indeed, because you'll recognize calls for love. And recognizing that with commitment and practice. And if it takes a lot of time, then it takes a lot of time. That's what time is for. You will remember to extend love. When you recognize your brother's behavior as a call for love, there's only one appropriate response, which we all instantly recognize. So respond accordingly. Respond to a call for love with love. You're joining with your brother. The ego can't stand up to that because the ego wants you to condemn him or her as a complete idiot or worse. Use whatever language you wish. We all do it all the time. Whether we call someone that to our face or not, or whether we tweet it out or not, or whether we comment on someone's social media feed that they're a complete idiot or not, we're still thinking it, aren't we? Right. So spiritual practice does involve, very much involves, our present moment awareness, because if we're not aware that we're doing it, how can we possibly be expected to bring it to light? How can we be expected to solve any problem if we're not even aware of it? Well, consider yourself aware of it now. If you hadn't been before, and if you had been, then this reminder will be of help. It always is on the path. So these videos are intended for everyone, whether you are a beginning course student or a long-time course student, anything in between, or whether you are simply tuning in and don't know what A Course in Miracles is and have never practiced it before. That's okay. Something will always be said here that you're meant to hear. Now, it may come across like a ton of bricks. I mean, it may really grip your attention and seem really powerful, even a bit harsh. If that's the way it comes across, that's the way it comes across. It may also come across as 
confirmation of something that you've always known, or as a flash of light, a release, perhaps a profound clarification of something, again, that you've always known, that there is only perfect oneness. The core ideas, the content of this course is very simple, but we need these lessons. We need these thousand pages plus of material in A Course in Miracles, all of the videos and all of the supplementary information or teachings that we can find that seem appropriate to us, because we're running amok, confused. We've been focusing on the outward form and ignoring the content. So let's focus on the content. That's the point. All right. So along the way, questions are inevitable. I mean, they really truly are. Spirituality is a deep process isn't it, of self-inquiry. While it's possible for us to have a blinding flash and awaken right now, right here in the present moment, the fact that we didn't just do that means that these questions are bound to come up and these lessons, these repeated lessons are necessary for us. Now, this course, like pretty much all spiritual traditions, this course says the same thing over and over again. I know. It says it over and over again in different words, which you receive differently on different days based on where your mind is, based on what your mood is, where you happen to find yourself on this spinning ball of rock, your station in life. These words that stay the same are read differently and mean different things to you as you increase your forgiveness. The fifth time that you go over the material, you'll begin to pick up things the second time. It's like reading a novel or seeing a movie multiple times. The more you do it, the more you pick out. And it's not the words that have changed at all. They're exactly the same. You're different. The more you forgive, the more this makes perfect sense, and the clearer it all becomes. This is how spirituality is designed to work. This course, in that sense, is absolutely no different than any other tradition. It is one of many doors. There are many doors. All of them lead to the same place. And in truth, there only appear to be doors. Remember, there is only perfect oneness. In other words, God. Oh, and you're not separate from God. You're not separate from your brother because there's no separation of any kind. So let's conclude with that statement. If you take nothing else from this conversation, Take away the idea that there is no separation of any kind. Questions, which of course are inevitable on the path, are always welcome here to the extent that you have them and you would like to ask them here in the comment thread on YouTube. Please go ahead and do so. Feel welcome to do that. If you have not yet subscribed, please do that too. Please go ahead and join us. This is the prompt in the corner of your screen over here. Click that arrow, subscribe, and join us. Several videos appear each week, and thank you to all of you who have recently joined us. This community is international, and there are people here literally from all different stations of life all over the world, which is a beautiful thing. It, it really is. It's a beautiful thing that we have access to this modern technology and can reach one another in this way. When something lands for you, it is your inner teacher speaking to you. So I thank you for joining me here, and I will see you all very soon.